Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome everyone into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. And joining us today is a very, very fun topic and a great company that's uh, seemingly doing the impossible. Something that I, uh, you know, we joke about often here on the show. Uh, today's show is going to be all about graphene, and I never thought I'd live to see the day an actual product that uses the substance, because you know we often joke that graphene can do anything except leave the laboratory. It's a very impressive product. It led me down a rabbit hole of Wikipedia entries and things like that. Um, but hey, we have uh, you know we have someone here to talk to us about an actual product, um, uh, you know, improving battery technology, and the promises have been big, but getting it to market has been something else. So I'm looking forward to talking with our guest, um, you know, all about graphene and nano and you know nanotechnology, and really the company is called Nanotech Energy. You can give them, uh, you know, you can of course give them a look, nanotechenergy.com. We'll have a link over at Computer America for the show notes. And joining us today is David Palmer. He is the Vice President of Business Development over at Nanotech Energy. David, welcome onto the program. How are you doing? Our pleasure, our pleasure. So. I think uh, a good thing. Uh, I'm sorry. A good place to start would be a little bit of an overview of Nanotech Energy. When was it founded, and what was its mission? Sure. So Nanotech Energy was founded in 2014. <coughs> Excuse mm-hmm. me. We're founded in 2014. Uh, our mission is to bring graphene technology to the world. Um, and initially, we've begun. Uh, With our battery technologies, we have a few different chemistries that we're working with as well. Uh, LCO, NMC, uh, lithium iron phosphate, uh, and others. Yeah, and and of course, um, changing something as fundamental as the battery, that's a big task because that's one of the limiting factors when it comes to technology nowadays. I'm sure, as you know better than anyone, that if you had a battery that could charge faster, hold more uh, energy, and just do everything, I mean... Uh, really everything at CES would just get better. Uh, I'm sure that uh, a lot of people have shown a lot of interest in that. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, kind of the basics first to kind of lay out what graphene is for people who don't know, because this is something that was only discovered in, uh, again, due to my Wikipedia research, uh, 2004, and it's been in development ever since. And uh, from my understanding, it is the most cited uh, paper in uh, like metamaterials and, uh, you know, that whole thing. So, Everyone's interested. Everyone wants to be the one to produce this. Why is there so much excitement around graphene? Sure. Well, actually, interestingly enough, um, our our, uh, chief scientific advisor and co-founder, Dr. Richard Kainer, filed the first graphene patent back in 2002. Nice. And actually, the the research that you were referring to in 2004 had cited Dr. Kainer as well. So uh, Nanotech actually holds the first graphene patent and that goes back to 2002. And uh, to tell your your viewers and listeners, uh, graphene is a single layer of carbon. Uh, it's one atom thick and has a lot of really interesting properties that show a lot of promise uh, as the graphene gets integrated into different products. Uh, it's 200 times stronger than steel by weight. Uh, highly conductive and can be tuned for various applications. Yeah. And of course, um, you know, people can poke around on your website for the different, uh, I'm sorry, for the different applications, uh, but everything from solar energy to, you know, conducting, storing, and just uh, transferring energy. I mean, it's, um, it's holding a lot of promise. So uh, over at Nanotech Energy, 
uh, we're you know we're looking at a product that you have. I was uh, kind of curious to get a scope of uh, Nanotech Energy's role in all of this. Are you creating the graphene? Are you creating the product from the graphene? What is uh, Nanotech Energy's role? So I would say both. As far as we as far as we know, we're the uh, world's leading producer of graphene. Um, we have a scalable. Uh, economically feasible process and we're able to produce high volumes of graphene at a purity of 95 percent or better that's totally impressive because like i said that's that's been uh, a running joke that you know you can't do this and now you're coming on the show out at ces and you're showing off that hey not only do we have it but you know hey it, it's for sale come on and uh, try it out so one of and obviously you have the product and then a good use case is going to be the battery Talk about non-flammable batteries because uh, talk about limitations. Lithium ion is ubiquitous. Everyone has it. Shipping it across seas, you can't put it on planes. It explodes in people's car, uh, you know, in, in people's pockets and their cell phones. Uh, you know, even hey, entire cars go up in flames that firefighters can't put out because lithium ion has severe safety issues. Uh, it'd be great to solve that. So, uh, what'd you make and how how did you do it? Sure. Well, I'd say the, uh, the primary component that lends uh, best to the safety aspect would be our uh, non-flammable electrolyte. Now, there are other non-flammable electrolytes that exist for lithium-ion batteries. However, the resistance is increased so much within the cell, you're only able to charge those at extremely low speeds um, due to various aspects uh, in our electrode system, we were able to overcome those challenges and we have extremely lowered resistance within the electrolyte itself. Now, um, one of my understandings, and you know, feel free to correct me on this, but uh, batteries charge slow because they are then, you know, they then release their energy slowly, and that's kind of a good thing. You know, uh, you don't want to, you know, charge in one second and release all the energy in one second. That's a problem. Does gra- is like is that where graphene steps in? Is that a capability of the graphene that's you know kind of over lithium ion is fast charging and slow release? No, that's something that you can manage um, without getting too technical. It's something that you can manage within the cathode and anode uh, mm-hmm. so that you can uh, achieve a faster charging rate and then a discharge rate that would be useful for the device itself. Uh, gotcha. So now, one thing that happens when you accelerate charging speeds is you know resistance can cause heat generation within the cell itself and that can damage internal components. Um, And in uh, other cases lead to thermal runaway, uh, although we don't have those issues. Perfect, and um, I I believe thermal runaway is uh, known in the industry as very bad. So I'm glad that you have uh, overcome that. And of course, uh, again, just reworking this whole new material into the battery, I guess from a business standpoint, you kind of have to look at it as clearly from a safety standpoint and from a product standpoint, this is something new, revolutionary, and in high demand. Uh, the only thing I would kind of question is how how is your scalability going? How is, is it affordable? Is this a feasible product? Or are you in the early stages of developing and then expanding? Sure. Well, we'll definitely benefit from economies of scale. We've recently purchased a 517-acre property just outside of Reno, Nevada, and that's where we're, we'll, we'll be building our full-scale manufacturing. Uh, currently, we have pilot uh, pilot production capabilities and a prototyping laboratory out in Chico, California. Gotcha. We're also we're also working with a third-party uh, manufacturer for assembly in the interim as we build out our our main facility. So when everything's um, you know kind of up and running in, in that um, you know in that plant's up and running, who do you who do you feel like are going to be your first customers? Like what industries or you know no no specific companies, but are you going for um, you know here we're seeing examples of like a double A battery? Uh, are you going for cell phones, automotive, all the above? What industries? Sure. So we we uh, I, I would say all of the above. For sure. Um, Military as well, aside from what you've mentioned, we have a few active uh, projects with DOD also. 
that's and, and I'm sure that all of them are just chomping at the bit to get something like this. It's um, you know not just safety concerns, but hey, improved battery that fixes so many things. Uh, so you have development that you're going to work on and expand. You have a lot of projects and a lot of industries looking at you. Uh, what would you say is are kind of your future plans? Is it get get the Nevada plant up and running? Is it finding business partners? Uh, I mean, creating the technology seems the hard part. What's next for you? Sure. So we're we're currently open to exploring things with new partners, but we do have uh, a lot of active projects going with development partners. You know, these uh, cells initially aren't going to be something that we retail directly to consumers. So there's always an integration aspect um, into our client's product line, and that's part of our developmental process. Gotcha. And, and and really, I'm assuming that, you know, with the work that you're putting into, I'm hoping that this is kind of a one to one switch that, you know, right now they're using lithium ion and eventually the form factor will be very similar. And it's just, you know, you don't really have to change that much. Like, how much do you think the industry will have to change to accommodate what you're using? Uh, very, very little. You know, we went into this wanting to design cells that uh, could utilize the majority of current manufacturing and assembly processes um, and our chemistry applies to an extremely broad way, uh, broad array of form factors. So, uh, you know, integration is fairly, fairly easy process. That's, that's just what you want to hear. Uh, so we're also getting some questions, um, you know, kind of from our chat here. And I see here that you're, you know, the, the actual product that you have, it's graphene. It comes in like a dirt looking substance but of course this is something that could be uh, then turned into an actual product uh have you tried mixing it with other things you know they're mentioning things like uh silicon and germanium i don't know if, if that's even really a thing but are you mixing with other materials trying to develop your own products other than just these batteries or are you selling the graphene directly to third parties who would then make their own materials are you strictly are, you know, this is our graphene, we're going to make products, or are you selling graphene to others as well? Sure. So we are selling graphene to others, um, and we have other product offerings as well that utilize our graphene, uh, EMI shielding, paints and sheets. We also have conductive inks and uh, conductive epoxies that, that are emerging as well sounds like you got your handful and you know uh some technology that i i haven't even heard of i'm going to have to do um you know more more wikipedia search on my own time but yeah this is um you know this is really cutting edge stuff and i just have to ask you ces is a big event i'm sure you've had a lot of people uh you know stop by how has the response been is it everyone like wow you know i didn't even know that was a thing yeah so uh the team has been pretty slammed from open to close every day. Uh, Yeah, so a lot of attention uh, and a lot of excitement as well. Hey, that's just what you want to hear. And I'm sure that you're very busy. Uh, You know, these interviews are planned to be about 15 minutes and I see we're already there. So I, you know, I don't want to take up any more time. I think you answered a lot of our questions and yeah, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about, you know, something that, like I said, I never thought I I would live to see the day to be an actual product. And here you are, um, you know, selling a a non-flammable battery, which is huge. Uh, Everyone, we've been talking to David Palmer, the Vice President of Business Development for Nanotech Energy. Once again, nanotechenergy.com. We'll have a link to it on our homepage. David, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. All right. Thank you for having me anytime. Our pleasure. All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead. That was our CS2022, uh, CS2022 coverage. And we'll be back with more. Everyone, stay tuned. <laughs>